Mountain bikes are absolutely crammed with technology, but let's face it, the Achilles heel for many of us tends to be a rear derailleur that hangs off the bottom of the bike here in rock bashing territory. Some brands are starting to use gearboxes just like Starling Cycles, and we're here today to find out a bit more about why they're specking them and what the advantages are. So this is Styling Cycles, and they're based in Bristol. And they hand make steel bikes. Right, Joe, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, a bit about Styling, yeah. uh, what you do, what's going on behind us, and also a little bit about some of these cool frames yeah. you've got hanging up on the top there. Yeah, okay, uh, uh, name's Joe McEwen. I run Styling Cycles. We're a company yeah, based in Bristol making steel for full suspension bikes. Um, for me, it started as a hobby, making bike frames in my shed, and then, People liked what I did and we slow, slowly started selling them and the company's just grown from that. So I think we've been going five years now. First couple of years was me on my own and then we've started employing staff and there's, there's four of us now, full time, plus various admin staff and people doing marketing, stuff like that. Um, yeah, that's, that's Starling Cycles really. Why Starling? Where does the uh, name come from? Yeah, so when, when, the sh when I was in the shed at the bottom of my garden, next door were some allotments and there were big tall trees in the allotments and the starlings used to roost in those trees. And to me, they're, they're very simple birds, but they're very kind of beautiful birds and they're a little bit sort of evil as well. They're little, there's something sort of quite cool about them. So I just thought they were great. They were a great sort of icon for the brand and they sort of match, yeah. match the ideals nice. of it. And uh, yeah. Okay, so what's, what's going on behind? It's obviously the workshop, there's yeah. stuff going on, there's a frame being put together in a jig over there. Yeah, so this, this is the workshop, this is where we make all the frames. Uh, so really, our, our job is turning tubes, we've got tubes in this thing here, cutting, cutting and mitering them so that they form the frames. James here is assembling them into the jig and kind of test fitting them. And then here where we're filming is the kind of welding area I and mean, there's, there's various other processes with frame alignment and yeah, putting on all the brazons, lots, lots of things going on. And that looks like a pretty good collection of old frames up at the top. Yeah, Must yeah. Be good stories, huh? So this, this, is, this is almost the history of styling cycles. We're missing the first bike I made. So the first bike I made was on a frame building course with a chap called uh, Dave Yates, who's a, a famous <laughs> just 80s. Dave Yates. Yeah, just Dave yeah. Yates. Famous wow. 80s, 80s, 90s. Yeah, late 80s yeah. maybe, to so 90s. Yeah. Frame builder. Made it, what, did he make the dog, dog's bollocks? No, that was, uh, um, no, that was Chad Roberts, Roberts, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah I can't remember. He made, he made the one. donkey's knob. Donkey, that's yeah. it, okay. So <laughs> I did a frame building course with him, made like a single speed hardtail. Yeah. Um, took it home. And he's quite conservative in his geometry. So he made me make a 71 degree head angle and it, it rode rubbish. Very conservative. Yeah, yeah, it was very conservative. <laughs> so it didn't ride very well. So I thought, right, I want a 68 head angle, a 67 head angle. So I actually, in my shed, made a jig out of wood, hired some oxyacetylene, chopped off the head tube, fitted a new one to the right angle and, and did it there in my shed. And then I thought, I can do this, let's make another one. So I just started making bikes. and up here shows the progression. So I actually made a bike for my daughter as the second bike, like a little kid's bike. No uh, the third one I made there is a Cannondale Profit swing arm, and I made a new front triangle for it because yeah. the, the swing arms are quite hard, require more, more complex bits. So is that where the love of single pivots came from? Yeah, I had my Cannondale Profit, it's one of my favorite bikes ever, I loved it. Could do everything on that. I had a, I had a build, like a 150, 160 build, it was amazing. Um, and then you sort of see through a little beat, first beady little eye, which is a single speed bike. First enduro bike, which was 26 inch, but I'd raced an EWS on that. As yeah, a, as a, still see the yeah, scrutiny. As, as, as a duffer though, not as a, not as a good rider, <laughs> as a bit of a duffer. And then, yeah, you can see the progression as it became the swoop and we sort of refined details. And then up here, some later things, there's the first stern downhill bike prototype. The fur, that stainless one there is actually the CEN test bike, so that's cracked because they tested it to failure. Sure, okay. Um, a clunker, a few other things. Nice. Okay, so what I'm really here for is to yeah. talk about the progression of where we're going. Yeah. And I know yeah. you've got a bike called a spur that's got a gearbox. Yeah. So let's go and have a look at the spur yeah, and brilliant. talk about gearboxes and modern tech. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, Joe, so the obvious question first up is, why have you gone for a gearbox on your bike? So I know you make a bunch of different mountain bikes, some are single speed, some have got regular uh, derailleur gears on there, and you've got this, the spur. Um, I, th I think a gearbox has always been an obvious solution for a mountain bike. A, a derailleur doesn't feel the best thing, do they? They get ripped off, um, they're sort of disposable, they wear. So a gearbox for a mountain bike being ridden rough terrain always seems like the obvious solution. So I've always thought about gearbox since I've been building bikes. And then sort of the opportunity came, I found out about Effigear and I thought, okay, that looks like a good system. It looks like it suits what I can do. Um, let's have a go at building a bike. So I think I contacted Effigear. Um, they liked the sound of what I was doing and they gave me a unit early on. And then I started set about developing a bike around that around that Effigear solution. Okay, so so this one's an Effigear, but I'm aware there's also a Pinion. Yeah. So I've, yeah. Written, I've written a Pinion, but what's, uh, for the viewers, what's the kind of the basic outlay and what's the difference on those? Um, to me, the biggest difference, they're both internal gearboxes. They've both got similar gear range. The biggest difference is to do with the output drive. So a, a Pinion is designed so that the output is a standard chain ring around, around, around the, the axle. Cranks, yeah, around yeah. the crank axle. And I think they've done that because it suits making commuter bikes. It suits making, you know, most of the hardtails, most of the bikes they make. This one has got the output shaft higher up. So for a standard bike, that would be, you know, you'd, you'd be limited to chain wing size. There'd be reasons they wouldn't, they wouldn't like it. But for a mountain bike where I want a, a slightly higher pivot and I want to be able to mount the, the swing arm around the output shaft, it makes perfect sense. So. Yeah, it, it was the obvious solution, really. I was going to say that the most interesting thing about this is the fact that your pivot point is directly around there, and it looks, it resembles basically all the rest of your suspension yeah, frames. Yeah, yeah. So you use a single pivot on all of the bikes? Yeah, yeah. I've always used single pivot. I've always ridden single pivot. Whenever I've had multi linkage bikes, they've annoyed me because they, they end up getting rattly and they cost huge amounts of money to replace linkages. And I've never felt the performance is any different, really. If, you, if a, a well set up single pivot is is a good solution and especially with yeah modern shocks we have now you know and yeah i mean the ext to be fair is an exceptional shock yeah, yeah compared yeah, to a lot yeah, of things yeah, yeah. out there um and all your frames are steel as well yep so i've always made steel um bizarrely my, my background is in carbon fiber so i was i was a, a carbon fiber aerospace engineer for a long time um but when i started making bikes i started in steel because i've, I've seen carbon fiber at the highest level Mountain bikes are lower level. They're, you know, they're, they're a consumer item. They're not a flying aeroplane. So I could never bring myself to make something lower level than what I've seen in aeroplanes. And it's carbon mountain bikes are fit for purpose. They're good. But when you've seen the very, very best, yeah. And I was never going to be able to achieve that at home on my own. So, and I think steel, I've always had steel bikes. I've always had steel, I've always had a steel hardtail. I had a few, a couple of steel downhill bikes actually, a Doberman Stella, which was beautiful, and a, uh, an SWD, which I was a the tiny, Dobermans, yeah, yeah, okay, uh, SWD, which was a tiny American company, and they yeah. both just rode beautifully. They've got a, a sort of damped feeling. Yeah, like steel has got very unique feel yeah, yeah, compared to other metals. Yeah. yeah, so steel to me seemed the obvious choice. It's it's. For a small builder, steel is easier to work with. Of course, at some point, the derailleur might disappear totally. Yeah. So let's talk about some of the advantages of a yeah. gearbox and some of the disadvantages. Yeah. Um, and the first thing I want to jump in with, which I've, I've discussed with the viewers before, who always ask why we're still using the derailleur gear. And the ultimate thing is, yes, all right, so they're hanging off the back of the bike, so they're not ideal, yeah. but they're cheap to replace, yeah. and there's not that much friction in the system, yeah. so I guess it feels like the industry is sort of biding time uh, until, yeah. until someone yeah. fully, I mean, I know there's two brands making very good yeah. gearboxes, but it feels like it needs to be a couple of other yeah. significant is, brands. This, this gearbox is amazing. The whole bike, it builds into an amazing bike. It builds into an amazing descending bike, but there is a little bit of drag in the system. So you, you've essentially got two sets of cogs that are always mesh together. Um, and depending which set of cogs you, you select is which how the gearing changes. But because those cogs are always mesh together and there's lots of oil between them, you've kind of got to move all that oil, you've got to move all the cogs, it adds a little bit of a little bit of drag. So the way I kind of describe it, it's equivalent to running a heavier pair of wheels compared to a lighter pair of wheels, or it's equivalent to riding up a slightly muddy hill compared to a dry hill. So there's not too much in it, but there is it's yeah, noticeable. So, so you can get up hills really easy, but over the course of a long day, you do feel more tired. But the descending ability, is amazing. So you've you've done a few things. You've you've meant because 
the swing arm pivots around this output shaft, there is no chain growth, there's no chain forces. Yeah, so of course, yeah. You've, it's like, everyone talks about like Gwyn's uh, chainless, chainless run. run. Yeah, yeah. yeah, everyone talks about that. And it, your suspension works amazing, and he yeah. talks about that. You've good. also, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's good as well, which helps. But uh, you've also got, there's no big lump of cassette on the back, so you've of lost course. a good pound of weight on the rear. So, you know, especially Chris Porter, someone who's always banging on about swing arm weight. Yeah. Um, if you make that rear swing arm light, it can move. It's got a lot of small bump sensitivity. It can move over small bumps. Yes, it's, it's funny. So we've we've discussed on the channel a lot. You know, the unsprung mass to the sprung mass sort of ratio of yeah. removing all the weight possible on yeah. the back end of the bike. The cassette is something that so few people actually refer to. Yeah, so we're adding more and more weight. Yeah, going yeah, to yeah, twelve yeah, gears, yeah, yeah, so you've got yeah, more and more yeah. weight on the back. Yeah. And that is what your rear wheel has to move up yeah. and down for your suspension. And clutches, clutches affect the suspension. Of course, yeah. And on certain suspension bikes, you can feel it. Yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah. yeah. So, great, so you're, you're taking a massive lump of weight off the back of the bike straight yep. out, no derailleur to smash off in a crash. Yep. Uh, did you say this was more of a gravity-focused yeah, bike? Yeah, so this, this, is, this is built as a 170-170, it's full coil. This, this goes downhill better than any downhill bike I've ever had. Admittedly, I haven't had a downhill bike for five or six years, but it's... It is unbelievable. It just carries speed. It's so you've got, got the weight on this part of the yeah, bike I'm as not, opposed to the back. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I think the positioning of the weight away from the wheel is a positive thing, but having the weight up or down in the frame, I don't think matters because you're. I don't know. I'm 75 kilos stood on the cranks here. Of course, it's going to overrun yeah, whatever the bike yeah, is. Yeah. So in terms of moving the bike between your legs, it's a bit more easy to move, but that's yeah. not a, a key riding ability, but a riding sort of thing. That's interesting. Um, I, I'm, I'm quite glad you said that, actually, because yeah. I think a lot of people would, would say the opposite of that. Yeah. And, yeah. and you're right, your body weight is always going to overcome. Yeah, yeah. it's dominant, isn't it? I think with an e-bike, it's a bit more noticeable. You've got the whacking yeah. great batteries, so yeah. it really is a lump of weight yeah. Yeah. down there. And that's, uh, of course, that's why e-bikes feel so good. Yeah. But if you, if, you, if you ride the bike and you, tur you lean with the bike, yeah. it makes no difference. It's only, it's only if you're one of those people that moves the bike between your legs that yeah. the center of gravity matters. But okay, so uh, so the positive so far, you're removing all that weight from the back of the bike. So your suspension is super supple. Um, the bike's going to be silent, no doubt, yeah, because of yeah. this. Yeah, no chain rattle. This chain doesn't move that far, so it doesn't clatter. It's so there's a, there's a few things at hand here. So the friction we've talked about because yeah. you've got the gears that are moving through yeah. oil. So yeah. I guess the flip side of that is because the gears are moving through oil probably you don't have to maintain it no, that often no. compared to lubing your chain and yeah. degreasing and yeah. everything yeah. all the time. So this this bike has been running for probably 18 months now. We've got another prototype that's been running for a couple of years that occasionally you drain the oil out of the bottom and top the oil back up and that's, that's it. literally it. nothing else, yeah. Okay, so what about the shifting of gears? Because it's going to be completely different. Now, yeah. I've ridden a pinion system, yeah. um, which has a, I think it's got like a twist, twist yeah. gear. Yeah. The older style system I had, we had the, the two yeah. Yeah, yeah, ports, yeah, yeah. but I noticed you've got a regular shifter on here. Yeah, so this so has got a SRAM, a SRAM shifter. It's actually a modified SRAM shifter, but just to change the pull ratio a little bit to suit the gearbox. Okay. And then you can't quite see it, but down, down this side here is a, a long tube with a big spring in it, and that spring tensions the cable. So there are two cables pulling from both sides, but one's tensioned with a big spring here, and then this just works like a normal a normal shifter that it just you know releases, and then yep. that so that's like the spring in the derailleur. So normal shifter, yeah, change is fine. There's a bit of difference in that as you're going down gears, you just press the button and it and it changes into as you're dropping down into. Yeah, I was going to say dropping yeah, down yeah, into yeah, yeah. A, a higher gear. Yeah, dropping down here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it uh, it changes instantly, so you can go from you know. As you're going down the hill, you just change gears. Keep banging just through the gears. Yeah. yeah. As you're going up the gears, you do need to you do need to stop pedaling a little bit. And it's not not going backwards, but you actually learn to sort of subconsciously just do a quarter of a turn backwards. But you can change as many gears as you want. And it sounds weird, but once you've ridden it two or three times, it becomes totally natural. And it actually becomes a real positive that you're you're coming down a hill, you're coming up to a small climb. All you have to do is knock off all the gears and then just stop pedaling for a second and then it's changed and it's changed instantly it's gone across instantly so i guess you approach the riding differently you kind of learn yeah yeah it's just you preempt oh, i need to click up yeah. a couple here yeah. and you it's you're a, already it's, in the right gear yeah. it's a learned skill okay. it takes a little bit of time to learn once you've got it it's totally intuitive and it's it's good okay so the gearbox sounds really positive all yeah. through um now is this technology you'd want to put onto like the trail bikes and stuff or is it not quite there yet do you um, think I've, one thing I've never done is tested this with a lighter build, but you know I think a lighter set of wheels would help. But the, the drag is there to the point where 
it's never going to be a zippy bike. It's never going to be a zippy bike for flowing single track. It's sort of, and part of it as well is the suspension so so supple. It does rob a little bit of energy because of that. You'd have to have quite a firm compression tune to overcome that. Um, so it's possible. One thing I've always thought is maybe we just have a few gears. I, I think there's an option of having like, I, I ride a lot of single speed. So I, my ideal bike would actually be a three speed gearbox. I didn't ask how many gears this has. This it's um, nine gears with 440% range. Okay. This one has actually got six gears in it because I've been testing out running less gears just as something to try out. And I've actually found that six gears is plenty. enough. Yeah. So mega interesting stuff. Yeah. Now. I can't help but feel that where we are with gearboxes, there's obviously this this brand, Effie Gear, and there's Pinion, yeah. which is great. Yeah. But there's brands like yourself, which are you're quite a small, like, yeah. almost a niche brand, making yeah. really cool products, quite specific. Uh, I know that uh, the Geometron bikes have used yeah. these in prototype stage. Yeah, 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 Sorry, yeah. they've used the Pinion one. Yeah. yeah. There's a few others. What's it going to take for the mass market to to commit to using gearboxes? Um, I I think. I think it needs the big players, doesn't it, to, to, to get involved. Smart and, and, and SRAM, and, yes, SRAM and SRAM. I, yeah. I, think, I think this is a good solution. I think it does that drag. We keep talking about it. It is enough to put people off. If you're riding this type of bike, it doesn't matter at all. If, you, if this is a winch and plummet bike, bike yeah. it's fine. But that's a small part of the market, isn't it? Um, most people want a bike that's a trail bike, really, isn't it? That's what most people ride yep. with a bit more efficiency. So there are options of chain drive solutions. So remember the Honda gearbox bike? Yeah, that's so I pretty much up. had a rear mech in a box yeah. from what I could yeah. work out. Yeah. So I actually was doing a bit of development work with somebody who was a, a, uh, an engineer at, uh, who makes the cars? Tesla, he was a Tesla yeah. engineer. And as a side project, we were looking at a chain drive uh, gearbox because the chain is more efficient than meshing gears. Yeah. So a chain is like ninety nine percent. And you, I guess you could protect the chain within a gearbox yeah. in yeah. oil, just like yeah. you would with yeah. With the well, gears. You, there's, there's various ways to do it. But as we as we went through this, then Shimano brought out a patent for a chain driven gearbox. So Shimano and SRAM have gearboxes. They're delving around. They they no. I, if they haven't got a fully working system, I'd be massively surprised. I yeah. I keep saying this. I reckon they've got a big a big red button on their desk, or yeah. the boss has got a big red button, and when when it looks like oh we're going to make money out of uh, drive or out of gearboxes, he presses the big red button. Yeah. But for them, it requires <laughs> big investment in their manufacturing capacity. It requires commitment from frame manufacturers. Yeah, yeah. so the, as well. the the step is massive. So yeah. it will only happen when if I start selling ten thousand well, of these, they'll probably. It's it's funny to say that the the step is massive. It's only the same as what's happened with e-bikes. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Yeah, maybe. For, for yeah, okay. Shimano and Bosch and all the other brands yeah. to, to commit to it, they need yeah. the frame manufacturers, and that's, that's yeah. happened really fast. Yeah. Think about it. So yeah. I think the market's ready for it. Well, this one looks pretty finished to me. Am I assuming this one's not a prototype? Is this like a available to buy? This this particular bike is a prototype, but we are now doing a production batch. So we're, we're doing a run of, of this 10 model? frames of this model of the Spur. There's a few little details we're changing. We're putting in a, a bit more of a refined shock mount. We're moving the cable routing to the top of the down tube. Um, Safeguarding it, I guess. Yeah, just it's not strikes. good for rock strikes there. Otherwise, it's pretty much good to go. You know, we've 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 had the two prototypes running for a long time, so we're happy with the design. Yeah, that's an exciting time, I think, to have a bike like that that's available to ride now with uh, some pretty cool new technology. I think, even though the gearbox thing's been kind of simmering mm. for a while, yeah, it's good to see brands like yourself committing to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's all the questions I have for Joe. I'm sure you're going to have some questions in relation to uh, steel bikes, single pivots, uh, gearboxes, anything like that. Hit us up in those comments underneath. And if you've got enough comments, maybe we'll get you along for a special ask yeah, session be in good. the studio. That'd be good. And that's about it from us. See you later. Bye, Ram.